Hey everyone, this is called the Light Radio 2. Uh, it's a really inexpensive FR Sky compatible radio transmitter. Um, it's got a lot of nice features, but I figured none of that matters unless it really works, right? So I wanted to know if this was going to be good, if it would be something that I could recommend to people. So I took it out to the field and did some range testing. I tested both D8 and D16 mode, and I tested it on a couple of different drones. And the results were actually pretty surprising. There was a good surprise and a bad surprise. Uh, so that's what I want to show you today. I also have a full review of this coming. Um, I'm pretty much done with it. I just have to do some editing. So if you're interested in this radio, then stay tuned. I'll have a lot more details uh, in just a few days. But right now, I just want to show you the range test because I thought that was kind of interesting in itself. All right, so I've got the radio here, and I'm going to test it first with this 1S Whoop. This happens to be a Meteor 75, uh, but it's got a built-in FR Sky receiver, the SPI receiver, a little red wire inside of there. And I think a lot of people who get this radio are probably going to be flying whoops, at least as one of the things that they fly. So I'm going to test this one out, kind of see how far we can get out in this field. Uh, the limiting factor is probably going to be the receiver in this drone, but let's see what it can do. If you look in the lower right of my screen, you'll see the RSSI value. It starts at about 60% and I'm standing very close by. So that's lower than we would like to see, but it's not actually uncommon for whoops with these built-in receivers. So I'm going to continue to plow ahead until I feel that there's an actual problem. Uh, if you don't know, RSSI stands for Received Signal Strength Indication. And it basically measures how loudly the receiver can hear the transmitter. Uh, it's not the same as range, it's not the same as link quality, but there is a correlation and we'll see that value dropping. In fact, it looks like it's already pretty low here, so I wanted to turn around and kind of look at how far we've come. You can see where we started, uh, but we're still flying. It actually still feels okay, so I'm going to plow ahead a little bit more. Uh, looks like I'm fighting a little bit of wind here. And in just a second, yeah, there's the failsafe. So now I've got to go walk and try to find it. Uh, but that was actually pretty good. I measured it on a map and it was about 709 feet or 216 meters. And that's actually pretty good for a whoop with a built-in receiver. It's possible to get longer range, uh, but it usually involves modding the antennas. And this one was totally stock. All right, so that's about what I would expect for a whoop with a built-in receiver gonna be plenty of range for the backyard uh, or for racing or for a small park uh, if you really want to push the range though you're going to be hitting the limit because of the receiver in here and this one is running d8 protocol that's what i run on all my fr sky whoops uh, because it's faster lower latency than d16 and so that's what's on this one so for the next test i've got this drone here this is one of my old five inch drones um, big old 6s battery on the bottom and this has an rxsr you can see the antennas here on the side so if I'm flying forward like this, then they kind of point upward. So this is a diversity receiver. As far as FR Sky is concerned, this is going to be kind of full range as far as the receiver. So let's see what kind of range we can get when paired with this radio. This time the RSSI is in the upper left hand corner of the screen, only you can see that it's displaying exactly 50 and that value is not going to budge and that indicates that it's just not showing the correct value. That's interesting because I'm pretty sure RSSI is set up correctly on this drone. All right, so that was surprising. That was less far than I made it uh, with the Whoop. And I would expect this to be able to go farther than that. Let me try it one more time. Maybe I'll try flying back from here, uh, see if it can do that. And if that still has problems, then I guess we'll have to see how it does on my regular radio. All right, that was super weird. Uh, as soon as I took off, I could hear that the connection was faltering a little bit. Uh, it started out at like 50 RSSI and then failed right away. So that was really strange. I powered this off, powered the radio back on. I'm going to try it one more time. At the beginning of this flight, I just wanted to kind of stay close, uh, make sure everything was working, see if I could feel any momentary dropouts in the control. And I think that was happening, although it was pretty subtle. So I continued to push forward. This is about as far as we got with the whoop. And now it's really starting to have more problems. Yeah, you can see it right there. It totally lost control. So I'm going to try to bring it back if I can. All 
Well, I made it farther that time, and I made it farther than the whoop, but still pretty weird. You could see how the connection was dropping out. I was lucky to be able to bring it back uh, without having to walk to the other side of the field. All right, at this point, I need to rule out the possibility there could be something wrong with the receiver in this drone. So I've paired it back with my normal radio, and we're going to give it a try. This time, RSSI on the ground is closer to 85%. Oh yeah, I had some problems when I first took off. Uh, what happened there was I had rebound it with my original radio, uh, but the aux switches weren't in the same order, and so I'm actually stuck in angle mode, but that's okay, I can push on. We've reached the end of the field. Uh, we're down in the 50s or 60s, so I'm going to try to continue all the way around the perimeter of this field and see if we can make it. Right in this corner, I could feel there were some momentary dropouts, uh, but I was able to keep flying and bring it all the way back. The far corner of this field is about 500 meters away, and that's pretty far, but if you look on the specs for the FR Sky products, they'll tell you that it ought to be able to get more than a kilometer. Um, I think that's more of an aspirational number. It has not been my personal experience. Maybe if you had uh, perfectly ideal conditions and ideal antenna placement and so forth, uh, maybe you could do it. But from my experience, I don't really trust the FR Sky system any farther than this. If you wanted to really go long range, you would need a protocol like uh, Crossfire, which is designed for that. All right, it's now the next day. I'm back at the field and I want to do a little bit more testing because this is really bugging me. The way this was performing uh, with the radio flying on D16, uh, it was just something was wrong. Uh, it wasn't an issue of there not being enough range. When I took off, I could immediately feel that uh, I was getting dropouts. Something weird was going on. And I was thinking about it as I was going home and I have a theory. Uh, my theory is this RXSR, where is it? It's in here. Um, this receiver supports full FR Sky telemetry, so it expects to be able to talk two-way to the radio and the radio back to it. Um, even if you don't hook it up to the flight controller, the radio and the receiver want to be able to talk to each other. And so it's possible that this radio may not fully support FR Sky telemetry. Um, and maybe, just maybe, that might be the problem with this RXSR. So thinking about that, I wanted to try two more experiments. First of all, this is the Whoop that I tested. Um, I tested it in D8 before, but now I switched it to D16 mode. Uh, you can switch that in beta flight. And then I've got another drone here. This is an HX 115HD, but you can see these two antennas here. This has an XM Plus, and the XM Plus is also a full range receiver, but this one does not support telemetry. So I'll be very interested to see if either of these do better on D16 than this guy did. If you have a Whoop or a toothpick with an SPI receiver where the receiver is built into the flight controller, then you can actually switch D8 or D16 uh, in beta flight. You just have to change the protocol. Uh, the one that says FR Sky underscore D is D8, and the one that says FR Sky underscore X is D16. All right, well, I'd say that was a successful test. Uh, I went as far in D16 mode as I did the other day in D8 mode. And so D16 mode appears to be working when it's an SPI receiver built into the flight controller like this Whoop has. And so now let's try this one. This again has an XM Plus. So that's a receiver made by FR Sky. It's got two antennas. And when I'm flying forward, you'll be able to see them like that. And we'll see how far this guy can get. This is also running D16. All right, this time you can see we're in the high 90s in terms of RSSI, and this is with the light radio, uh, so that's pretty cool. Looking at the DVR, it looks like there's some jello in the image. I didn't expect that. I've gotten cleaner video from this drone in the past. Uh, maybe the camera's loose or bent prop or something like that. My FPV video is getting really bad, uh, but I was able to continue flying through it. And here we are reaching the far corner. The RSSI is actually pretty high, but as I round this corner, I do actually have a momentary dropout. So I brought it straight back from there. All right, that was awesome. I flew this uh, just as far as I flew the big one on my big radio the other day. Um, video was pretty bad. That's because I've got this antenna tucked in here and it was on 25 milliwatt, I think. So, uh, but the receiver was fine. You could see it had a little bit of issue on the far corner. This one did too. 
So I thought that was pretty interesting. Uh, when paired with a Whoop, it worked great. Uh, the range is just as good as I would expect on any FR Sky radio. And with this guy, with the uh, XM Plus receiver, it was also quite good. And these are pretty representative of the kinds of drones that I think people are going to fly with this radio. But it was very interesting what happened when I tried to do it with the RXSR. Um, I haven't heard of other people trying that or having a problem with that. So if you've tried it, I would be very interested to see what your results are like. But for now, I guess I would recommend that you stick with those other receiver types if you're going to use this radio. The comparison of D8 versus D16 was also pretty interesting. I tested this drone both ways, exactly the same drone. The only difference was the protocol and they went a similar distance. And so I couldn't see any difference in range. Although I've heard a lot of people say D8 works better than D16. And logically that makes some sense. Uh, it's smaller packets. It's going to send the data more quickly. If some of the packets don't get through, there's, there's hopefully still enough data to fly with. Um, so it would make sense that D8 would be a more reliable link. But honestly, in my experience, uh, I've seen a similar link quality between the two of them. A similar amount of range, a similar amount of problems when there's going to be problems. And so if you've seen a definitive difference between D8 and D16, I'd be interested to hear about that. Um, I do choose D8, but I choose it for a different reason, and that's because of latency. Uh, it sends those smaller packets more often, which means the drone can respond more quickly to your stick inputs. Again, I will have a review of this radio in just a few days, um, and so that will contain all the rest of the information that I think you should know if you're looking at this radio. Uh, so stay tuned for that. In the meantime, if you want to look down in the video description, I'll leave a product link, and so you can see the rest of the features and specs that way. So be safe out there, uh, keep flying, and I will see you next time.